All right, welcome back. Another DNA story. Oh. I'm looking at a report on uh, hit the like button, please hit the like button. Thank you, I appreciate you. Hit the like button. Let's bring everybody else into the room. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's ginger the algorithms. Thank you. Um, DNA shocker, paternity fraud crisis explodes in Nigeria. I mean, this is like repeat news, but let's cover it. There's a, there's a fresh report from nine hours ago on leadership.ng. And I'm just going to read and then we'll take it from there. See if we can get one or two things from it. Again, the same reason why I'm covering the short stories. These are the extremes that many people will rather listen to than to learn how relationships work. The point here, by the time I'm done here, is that this is probably most likely not your story. So engaging stuff like this and never getting to the end of the live stream where I cover the lessons, you're not doing yourself a favor. Okay. But I'll cover it just so you know that I'm acknowledging that there are crazy people out there. There are crazy stories out there. I'll cover them. Okay. But please always stick around to gather the lessons because uh, most likely the sensationalism in this story, you can't relate. You're just like, oh, wow, there are crazy people. Ah, oh girl, exactly. But it's probably not your case. There are good people, good people, good men and good men everywhere in the divorce court. These are not people committing paternity fraud, I promise you, for the most part, okay? For the most part, it's little, little petty, stupid stuff, which we're going to cover many of them later. I have a super story today. I have a mega story today from a brother that we're going to cover today. So stick around. Now, with that being said, let's talk about this DNA. Let's see what patients e Evie or Ivy, uh, Ihe Jirika, Ihe Jirika, she put a report on leadership NG. I'm going to read it. She says, in recent years, Nigeria has seen an alarming rise in cases of paternity fraud, a phenomenon where men are misled into believing they are the biological fathers of children who are not theirs. This issue, once considered a private and somewhat rare occurrence is now emerging as a significant social crisis with far-reaching implications for families, legal systems, and societal values. Paternity fraud in Nigeria is becoming increasingly prevalent, with some experts suggesting that up to 27% of men who undergo paternity testing discover they are not the biological fathers of their children. This figure, while difficult to verify due to the sensitive nature of the issue, highlights a growing crisis that cuts across various so social strata, from the poor to the affluent. One of the most troubling aspects of paternity fraud is that it often remains undiscovered until years after the child's birth, sometimes surfacing during medical emergencies, divorce proceedings, or when men decide to take DNA tests out of curiosity or suspicion, or out of too many stories like this on social media. Uh, it creates fear inside the heart of certain people that are already on some kind of edge. Okay. Let me make sure that I get rid of this. Hold on one second. Uh, uh, Let's see. All right, good, perfect. Um, several factors contribute to the rise of paternity fraud in Nigeria. One key factor is the societal pressure on women to bear children. Societal pressure on women to bear children. Those are that's those are reasons. So I'm giving you reasons. If you buy into it, say yes. One. If you say it's bullshit, put two or no. That's nonsense. In the chat. Thank you. Um, Particularly male heirs. Uh, one key factor is the societal pressure on women to bear children, particularly male, male heirs, uh, which can lead some to engage in deceptive practices if they face fertility challenges or fear stigmatization for being childless. Cultural practices and gender dynamics also play significant roles. There's two more things, two, three. Cultural practices and gender, gender dynamics also play significant roles. I'm not sure how gender dynamics can play a significant role if it's a woman who is com committing paternity fraud all the time. Um, 
how is that playing role here right well i won't say all the time there are also people that steal babies in the hospitals and stuff like that but i'm talking about particularly a situation where there's a deception by a woman to a man right so how can we bring in gender dynamics because that cancels out if it's a woman that will commit that all the time anyway let's keep going in a society where male children are uh, often valued more highly and where women's uh, economic security is sometimes tied to childbearing the pressure to produce a male a male hair uh can be overwhelming some some women may resort to paternity fraud to maintain their marriage or secure financial support those are two more reasons maintain their marriage and secure financial support right are these all valid reasons i, I, I mean, i'm not sure if there's any reason can be valid but i'm just asking also infidelity is another contributing factor some people are like, hey. <laughs> in cases where a woman engages in extramarital affairs the paternity of a child might be questioned leading to potential cases of paternity fraud if the true biological father is different from the presumed father the smart dna's 2024 report released recently revealed that one in four men tested for dna were not were not one in four men uh tested for dna were not the biological fathers of their children as 27 percent of paternity tests conducted were negative the report covering july 2023 to 20, june 2024 is so it's a fresh report unveiled several startling findings findings that shed light on society dynamics economic factors and changing family structures in the country all right let me read uh somebody's comment is here let me see okay sparkleberry says just thinking out loud here is it possible that these men that have been affected have some form of untreated fertility problem also are the women desperate to have children I'll leave that on the screen. I want other people to really address that. That's a good question. Those are two good questions. I want other people to address them. Mm, all right. So let me keep reading. Okay. According to the report, hold on one second. Let's keep going. According to the report, 27% of paternity tests conducted came back negative, indicating that more than one in four men tested were not the biological fathers of the children in question. This statistic underscores the prevalence of paternity uncertainty in Nigerian society. There's going to be growing paternity uncertainty uh, in Nigerian society because we're covering this kind of news. There are men that already feel insecure about the paternity of their children and that's this is the uncertainty is just going to grow but again remember social media or this type of news or media only magnifies what is already there right so yeah but that's also a significant factor i'm not gonna lie that's a significant factor so there are people that on a normal day they wouldn't think of that but now they're like lining this up with other experience they're having and they're like hmm that child, it kind of looked like me. His nose, but his nose, mm, yeah, I'm not sure. So the uncertainty is going to probably grow more and more. But regardless, what we know is that 27%, according to this report, are coming back negative. For obviously, uh, there will be other reasons beyond she just wanted to commit fraud. Uh, one thing I can think of is like babies are stolen at the hospital and exchanged without the consent of the actual parents, without even her knowing. There are other ways for her to find out, yes, but a lot of those other ways can also be conflicted by other factors. Um, but I don't know. Would would we say this is minority of the cases or majority? These are just the factors, okay? The report noted a significant increase in DNA tests for immigration purposes. That's one reason why people do tests growing more than any other test type saying this surge aligns with the ongoing japa phenomenon as more nigerians seek opportunities abroad the trend suggests a growing number of parents with dual citizenship are processing paperwork for their children's 
emig emig uh, emigration. Revealing the economic disparity, the report shows that an overwhelming 73.1% of all DNA tests were conducted in Lagos, with a stark divide between mainland, 67%, 67.5%, and island, 32.5%. This concentration highlights the economic divide within Lagos and across Nigeria, raising questions about access to such services in other parts of the country. All right, hold on one second, guys. Hold on, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. All right. We shall continue. So if you saw that comment from Sparkberry and you see it later, please leave a comment. I want to know your thoughts about that. Uh, let's keep going here. So on gender imbalance in test initiation, the report revealed that men initiated a staggering 88.2% of all test requests. That's to be expected. So these are men that are questioning the paternity of their children compared to just 11.8 percent by women this significant disparity raises questions about gender roles trust in relationships this is major this is the part that i want to talk about the trust issues in relationships and societal pressures in paternity certainty the report also showed that the uh, ethnic distribution as the yoruba ethnic group accounted for 53 percent of tests jesu Jesus Christ, you're a bad people. Yes, oh my God. I wonder why. Followed by Igbo, 31.3%, with Aousa at only 1.20%. Those ones are not asking any questions. <laughs> this distribution, which doesn't align with national ethnic demographics, should prompt discussions about the cultural attitudes towards paternity testing. That's a good point. Genetic science across different Nigeria ethnicities. The report, you know, uh, let's see. Most tested children were aged zero to five, 54%, suggesting the preference for early paternity confirmation. There you go. So a lot of people are looking for confirmation. Men aged 41 and 31, 41 plus 45%, 31 to 40, 37% were most likely to request tests. These are people in, their, in the beginning of their life. Trust is being tampered with big time. Potentially reflective of economic cap capabilities or increased paternity concerns in older men. The report stated while, only, while also revealing a slight gender bias in child testing. And I quote, more tests were conducted on male children, 52.8% than female children 47.2 percent that's not too far hinting at the possible cultural preferences for confirming paternity of male offsprings on the reason for the testing the report showed that the vast majority of tests 85.9 percent were conducted for peace of mind Oof. conducted for peace of mind highlighting the personal rather than legal motivations behind most dna testing in nigeria this is quite revealing. And I quote, these findings offer a unique window into the changing dynamics of Nigerian families and society, said the operations manager at Smart DNA, Elizabeth Digier. And I quote, the high rate of negative paternity tests and the surge in immigration-related testing are particularly noteworthy. They reflect broader societal trends that merit further discussions and research. 
The concentration of testing in Lagos also raises important questions about accessibility and awareness of DNA testing services across Nigeria. As a company, we are committed to expanding access to our services nationwide while maintaining the highest standards of accuracy and confidentiality. By the way, these things are not always accurate. But I guess you can solve that problem by asking for a second or third opinion, right? The legal implications of paternity fraud are complex and far-reaching. In Nigeria, there is no specific law addressing paternity fraud. Yeah, because family law, man. Leaving affected men with limited legal recourse. Yeah. Although men who discover they are not the biological fathers of their children can seek redress in court, the outcomes are are often uncertain and may not adequately address the emotional financial toll on the victims. That's the point, the, they're emotional in nature. So it's very hard for, for the judicial system to, to, be, to, to get too nosy about that, you know, it's very hard. But I'm sure as, you know, as they continue to do that, there's gonna be more and more conversations around it. A legal practitioner, barrister Tony Obiora, said addressing paternity fraud in Nigeria requires a multifaceted approach. First, there is a need for greater public awareness about the prevalence and consequences of paternity fraud. Okay, so education, right? That's value system, building the value system around that. Believe it or not, a lot of people in uh, ages past, they, they don't really make much of it outside of maybe like they said earlier on, they're just trying to make sure they have children they want to have kids or they had uh, previous relationships that really didn't end properly before somebody asked their hand in marriage there's so many things that can create this right uh, educational campaigns can help dispel the stigma associated with infertility there you go so again value system a lot of people's value system are built around their ability to have children right so that's a big deal uh, encourage honest communication within marriages and uh, secondly legal reforms are essential to protect the rights of men and uh, children affected by paternity fraud this could include the in in introduction of laws that provide clear guidelines for addressing paternity disputes uh, and offering adequate remedies for victims thirdly the availability of dna testing should be expanded and made more affordable Mm, even here i don't think it's exactly that affordable uh because that's the question that keeps coming up who's going to pay for it who's going to pay for the lab tests dna testing is a crucial tool in establishing paternity and can help pre prevent fraudulent claims encouraging the use of dna testing be before a man is listed as the father on birth certificates could be a preventive measure well, again, who's going to pay for it? <laughs> he also stressed the need for social support systems that provide counseling and mediation services for families affected by paternity fraud, saying these services can help mitigate the emotional damage and support the rebuilding of trust and relationships. So, again, a lot of people like to speak about this topic from the standpoint of morals. You cannot do that onto there's a there's building the value system around it first you can't talk about morals unless you unless you build the value system in the society first a lot of people that are having these conversations this is one of the things that they are missing black diamond welcome says this is becoming an epidemic babes wind good evening good evening good evening to you anyway let me know what your thoughts are around this i'm curious to know what your thoughts are uh, join the conversations in the comment area in the chat. Uh, let's move forward. Hit the like button, share, subscribe, turn up your notifications so you're notified when we go live. I'll be right back. Hey, Prestige fam, show some love to the video. Hit like, subscribe, and share. Are you in Europe, America, and struggling your relationship? From argument to abuse and trust issues, we're here to help. Lola and I founded uh, Prestige Marriage Academy to transform your story. With 20 years of friendship, 17 years of marriage, experience with navigating the ups and downs of marriage, and personalized coaching, includes 24 seven support. Ignorance is expensive. WhatsApp us at plus one seven three two three zero five eight five seven seven to book a free discovery session today and take charge now. Don't wing it. Join us in creating the love life you, you deserve. deserve.